Located in New Mexico's high desert is the complete rethinking of a house. These off-grid buildings are designed to harness heat in the winter and deter it in the summer. Their roofs are built to utilize every drop of rainwater and designed to grow their own food. Using old tires, bottles, and beer cans, these homes are made out of garbage. Built into the earth and completely autonomous like a ship, they're called earth ships. Amazingly, those who live in these odd-looking structures still enjoy almost all of the luxuries of a traditional house. Nowhere else in America can you legally experiment with housing like this according to New Mexico state law. How did this movement get started? Where is it going? And how can you actually be a part of it? Our first stop was at the most recent Earthship construction site, where we met Mike Reynolds, who is proudly responsible for all of this. In his eyes, he's found an answer. This is not look like a typical work site. Yeah, well this this is our main structural material is tires. We have to register every build site as a waste dump. Really? That's that's how ridiculous it is. So every, this is a waste dump. This is a waste dump. It is still harder to get a permit for a sustainable, absolutely off the grid building than it is for a, a, a frame cracker box, you know. I wrote a law called the New Mexico Sustainable Testing Sites Act. It's true, he did. But if we're gonna go down that hole, we're gonna need a little history. As suburbia flourished and America blossomed, Mike recognized what was coming. And there is no one factor more representative of the economic well-being of the American citizen than the home in which he lived. New Mexico is the state where they tested the atomic bomb and they blew apart 10,000 acres and made it unusable for 200,000 years. And they test airplanes and people die. And they test drugs and people get sick. Why can't we test housing? Why can't we test sustainable housing? Most of Mike's life had been lived against the grain. So when he saw the Vietnam War, he sought something else. I came out here to New Mexico straight from architectural school, to race motocross, to get injured so I wouldn't have to go to Vietnam. There's all these 50 people lined up and they all want to win and I want to win, but I've got one thing over them, I want to get injured. And none of them want to get injured, so that made me dangerous. <laughs> but anyway, I got my degree in architecture, so I bought an old barn made of railroad ties and I started adding on to it and I was doing it for myself. Stockholm, Sweden, June 12th, 1972. It is clear that the environmental crisis which is confronting the world will profoundly alter the future destiny of our planet. And the more cities man built, the more problems there were. Housing, transportation, congestion, pollution. Two weeks after hearing that, within two weeks, I was making a house out of beer cans. And, and oh man, I got so much, I got, you know, just practically hate from the architectural community building, you know, disgrace, I was called, and everything like that. In the same year of 1975, the world population reached 4 billion and the term global warming was recognized. Tied up in the whole conversation was garbage. We got away with building a beer can building here and then, then we got into bottles and we got into tires and we got into thermal mass and we got into water catchment and as the world got more and more in jeopardy on all things that we need. We just incorporated them into the buildings, so now we're building what we call an earthship. It's a vessel that addresses six things that humanity must have. That's comfortable shelter, electricity, water, treating and containing and treating your own sewage, food, and dealing with your own garbage. As Mike's movement started growing, the government started to take notice and began to stunt his growth. Citing codes and malpractice, the New Mexico government aimed to strike him down. I gave up the stuff that I love to be an architect, and then my fucking license got taken away. <laughs> After Mike visited his hometown, Oliver Hodge, a documentarian, decided to follow Mike's story and create the film Garbage Warrior. The film follows Mike's journey, where he fought for no codes, no limits, a place to fail and rebuild in hopes of landing on a solution to the world's housing crisis. But to many, his proposals were laughable. 
they just didn't know what to think of it, but some old guy got up and he said, uh, everything's about pickup trucks in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, imagine driving your pickup truck through a frame building. You'd go in one side and out the other and it'd break out your windshield. He said, imagine driving your pickup truck through a wall like this, you'd die. Everybody laughed and they said, okay, go ahead and do it. Mike was fighting for a few square miles. The homes he was working on were completely elective. No one was being forced to be a part of the process. And after many times reluctantly suiting up and enticing government offices, Mike had a glimmer of hope. And it took four years, but Governor Bill Richardson ended up signing it, and it's all. That's amazing. With an official green light, Mike and his team went full steam ahead. Yeah, and you've got it figured out here. Well, we've been doing it for 50 years. A chimpanzee could figure something out in 50 years. So, I mean, it's fun to figure out how to make these better and better each year. The part that's not fun is, and it still goes on, is, you know, code approval and regulations and some people being prejudiced still about garbage. These buildings, if we build them right, they stay at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't care if it's 20 below zero, are 105. We use beer cans to pack out with cement the tire work to get it to the next level so we start throwing mud or you know adobe mud on there and it ends up being a mud plastered wall. This is pretty cool like the first thing that we had on this site was that box with that stuff in it and we plugged in our cement mixer and we plugged in our saws and we built a house. We brought our power to the house there's the thing that'll take care of people shining down from the sky. I don't think if someone didn't know what these are, they would land on that's a house. No, no, probably not. Because a house, to me, a house is a piece of shit. You know what I mean? It, it, I don't want it to be a house. That, that mound of dirt over there will take care of you. I need to go talk to that guy that's just pulled up behind that building because uh, he doesn't know what he's doing right now. So. Right on. I'm going to go do that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, Galen, sorry. Just keep going. Just, just go. You don't want this because this will just cave in anyway. Right. You got to give this a slope from here right. to here. Yeah. Got it? Sounds good. Okay, good job. Oh, uh So where, <clears throat> where are we going? We're going just two miles away to the Phoenix. It's at the north end of the community. The community is about two miles long. When you, you come through this place, it's so different than the rest of society. I feel like we're in an entirely different world. It's like that much uh, of where I really want to go. To, to me, it's not out of goody two shoes, save the planet, uh, love thy neighbor or any of that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. It is logic. It is only logical. This is the one I told you I've spent one night here. Oh, yeah, okay. It was meant to show people that you can live in a high-end way and still be absolutely sustainable. This building is absolutely all of every grid. And it kind of looks cool. like like an amusement park. It sort of is. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be out. No, there's no rush. There, there's my tangerines. You weren't kidding about the whole jungle thing. The sewage of the toilet go out to septic tanks at either end, and then you know how a septic tank has a drain field. Yeah. The drain field comes right back in under here in a rubber line cell. This is all growing from shit. And, uh, so I'll just take you a quick through first. This yeah. is the living room. A waterfall. Waterfall fireplace. A fireplace. Yeah, so I just went off. I just did whatever. You went all the way off. People think that you have to be in a teepee in the mountains to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show them, look, this is pretty luxurious. You can be sustainable and be luxurious. The cupboards, the floor, it seems like everything is intentional. But this, this shows people what can be done. Mm -hmm. 
This pile of literal garbage is worth $1.5 million. To find out what it's like living in one of these vessels, we visited this dog and his guardian, Judy. What don't you have? You know, you have a lot of things here that a lot of people can't say they can control. I can I'm control sure my whole environment. I've got six solar panels, which supply me with enough electricity always, except for really cloudy days. But then I have a windmill. So for if it's cloudy, it's windy. <laughs> The roof is slanted so that the rainwater goes down into the cisterns. I have three cisterns of 1,500 gallons each. You know, I'm getting purified water that's rainwater, and, you know, everyone else is drinking microplastics. <laughs> so, I mean, in total, how many Earth ships are there? Oh, that I don't know. There are here, there are 60. I mean, not only do we get to live here, but we also serve as a demonstration that you can build your house out of old tires. And you need a few things besides old tires and cans and bottles. Do we want to go in? Let's see the humble earth ship you have going. Hot tub. Got a hot tub. That's luxury. So not that, a... not that humble. Not that humble, okay. <laughs> so here are uh, two skylights. These are what suck. These, are, these don't suck, they, they're awesome. They suck that hot air, go on. But I'm sure there's a community that, that's tied you together. You've tied a community together through that. Is there? There used to be. There used to be. <laughs> and then some people got disenchanted and thought that uh, Michael should pay for more of the roads and he should do this and he should do that. So there became a split. But still, uh, there is a little core group that I'm associated with. Yes. So what happened? The ugliness of America came to the great, greater world. <laughs> Judy is referring to the greater world Earthship community here in Taos, which along with Judy's home seems to be full of personality. As she continued tending to her ship, we traveled just down the road to a more comprehensive type of Earthship. And this is the latest global model Earthship. The global model is really called the global model because you can build it anywhere in the world. Earthships are all unique, each built for the specific climates that they inhabit. However, Mike Reynolds and his team designed a model that can function anywhere on Earth. This is Truchas, and Deborah helped build it. I mean, this is pretty much as good as it gets in terms of growing food. Um, you have these huge banana trees in here. Uh, you got rosemary, you've got inca berries, you got fig trees. So really, this is kind of an experiment with how much can you actually do in terms of growing your own food. The greenhouse also serves another purpose, temperature regulation. Between the living area and the outside lies the greenhouse, which acts as a climate buffer. Every Earthship faces a few degrees off of true south to deter the sun in the summer and fully harness its power in the winter. On top of that, surrounding the remaining three sides of the building are tire-packed walls that absorb the heat in the day and transfer it inside at night. You know, you have all this dirt, all this earth that's like a battery, and you can heat that up and cool it as you want, you know, for your own comfort. And so by heating up your greenhouse, then that is charging up the rest of the house and those earth walls and then at night or in winter that kind of comes back into your living area and makes it comfortable for you. It's all on solar so in here you have three bathrooms um, running and you know this is a huge building and it runs all on solar and solar hot water. People here survive on just seven inches of annual rainfall. Seven inches for drinking, cooking, showering, the bathroom, even watering the plants. So you'll always see in all airships that the showers are a little bit elevated because it just gravity feeds down. So you're using the same water four times. You're getting the rainwater, you're filtering it to shower with. Then that shower water, that's one. So the shower water uh, waters your plants in the planter bed. So you're growing food with that, that's two. Third time is you flush the toilet with that same water, and then that same water goes outside and waters plants that are outside. So you're using the same water four times. If you're in your flat or your home or wherever it is, and you, you, know, you open up the tap, it's like, where is that water coming from? And if you switch on the light, where is that light coming from? You know, and the vegetables that you eat, where are those coming from? And where does your poop go when you flush the toilet? You know, to me, like every day that I can spend doing this and somehow 
showcasing it or teaching other people about it or sharing that information is huge. So, yeah. After learning more about how Earth ships function, it was time for us to check into ours, another model named the Encounter. Oh, this must be the AC units that they talked about. When you open this, it's like a vent. Yeah, you can hear the air coming through. That's so cool. By opening certain vents, a vacuum is created that can draw cold air through the insulated mass of tires and earth, which can cool the house by up to 40 degrees, all while using no electricity. When you stay in an airship, you can manipulate the environment to see how it works firsthand. As we moved in for the next few days, we were amazed at how normal everything felt. After spending the night in our encounter, we headed over to the construction site for the latest model, Unity. Mike calls it a, a festival of labor. Yeah. <laughs> so, which is kind of what it is, actually. It is some kind of festival, and it's pretty laborious. Uh, this is Phil, one of the first to join Mike in his journey. Being here from the start, he has seen Earthships grow, along with the community of those who dwell in them. You know, the people are, are just on the stranglehold by corporations, which give them everything they need, not give them, sell them everything they need. Government, which mm -hmm. has the ultimate control of all those things. And then seeing that you don't have to be, that you can be self-reliant. That's my motivation. Should we grab some tires? Yeah. All right. Let's just take a couple of them. Then we're going to want some cardboard to put in the bottom. It's like, it's like most of it built out of beer. Remember your first tire pounding? <laughs> All your effort is going to be trying to get the dirt up under the sidewall. Trying to get it as solid as possible in there. And so we're going to do this a lot of times. <laughs> Have there been any just complete failures? I mean, it, it, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you learn from that, right? Oh yeah. In our culture, failure is kind of a, you know, if you fail at school, it's like a bad thing, right? Yeah, there's so much stigma around that. Yeah, and so it's fairly, it's refreshing to be with people that see failure as actually success, you know? Is that like part of the foundation here? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So an interesting element that I keep hearing is, you know, like client and, and company and, and like it is a business, right? But it's like different. I get asked all the time, is this a cult? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> you think it is? Uh, no, it's a, it's a business. I mean, it's, it's not like a, uh, you know, booming successful business financially, but we're, we're always like, uh, I mean, we're, we're always sort of like treading water and mm -hmm. keeping the head above just enough to move on to the next evolution. Yeah. You see how this one's getting kind of puffed up? It almost looks like it's starting to look like it's full of air. Yeah. That's kind of the, kind of the idea. Yeah. Hear that? Is that when you know you're done? That means it's getting close, yeah. But the compaction's important, you know, because we don't want the building to like... Yeah. So we do want them. That's what it's all about. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> we'll keep going. Chris, you want to go... Do... Oh, what are you trying to kill? I just need to have some alone time with this tire. While I spent my alone time with my tire, Phil told the crew about what Earthshippers do outside of the U.S. 
Earthship Biotexture has traveled across the globe in hopes of providing sustainable and safe housing for communities in need. We nosed around down there a little bit. There's lots of tents, there's some container things, but really there's nothing for the people yet. This is a permanent structure that will take care of people that takes very few skills and those are easy to acquire. The local people can replicate these. The crews tend to build airships in disaster zones. Building practices are more welcomed than scrutinized, and there is often an abundance of their most prominent building material, garbage. So in addition to these things being made out of tires and cans and bottles, they are also just consuming the garbage of the community for insulation. Yeah. All right. You got it? Got it. Yes. So why did we do this? This is like the bearing walls of the of the house. You know, all our all our roof sits on tire wells. I mean, you're reusing a piece of a trash essentially. Yes. But what are the other benefits for the structure and for these homes? It's the thermal mass. So the tire wall is what re takes on and regulates temperature inside the building. So when you walk in your place and it's warm, mm -hmm. it's because those tires are holding all that heat. This guy right here. This thing right here. <laughs> a thousand more times, and you got a house. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> the pounding was rough, but luckily we set aside some time to explore what the locals are like over a lunch date with Kathleen. Welcome to my humble abode, gentlemen. Any questions about this part? Um, are you an artist? Uh, okay. yes, since I was two. Okay. okay. This is my studio. What does this say? What does that say? That says I did ayahuasca and this is what happened afterwards. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, all right. Are we having lunch now? We are, gentlemen. We are having lunch. Well, you made my first experience of having people um, come and visit my Earthship really interesting. Has no one ever been? No. So, wow. Huh. So, what are we eating? Mac and cheese. <laughs> what kind of people are attracted to the Earthship? You 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 call it an experience, a lifestyle. I think that people that question? think for, uh, think for themselves. Okay. Is that an independence thing? Mm -hmm. People want to be self-sufficient. They're also made out of garbage. The people? Already, no, no. <laughs> No, no. The, the, uh, <laughs> the houses, you know they're made out of tires right, and yeah. tin mm -hmm. cans and stuff like that. Yeah. So it helps to clean up the environment. Mm -hmm. There's something about being nestled in that's very different than in other kinds of structures. Hmm. What's the hardest part about all of this? Well, if I want to do the wash and it's cloudy for a couple of days, or if I want to take a bath instead of shower, I have to think about how much water I have and stuff like that. Sure. So the kind of people that live here, they all like living like that, being conscious of everything, all the water you're using, all the electricity you're using. People that live here like the idea that they don't have utilities. Can you imagine your life with no utilities? Why should we do without things? If solar and water catchment and wind power, I have a wind generator too. If those things can work, why aren't more people doing this? It's insane. Kathleen and others who live in Earthships are able to live surprisingly regular lifestyles, far more similar to society than you might imagine. Not all of the earthships here are in the plains. One of the first build sites is located a few miles away, high up in the mountains, a place more demanding. Oh, you can see it right up there. Wow, look at those earthships. This was the first community that Mike started back in the, I wanna say late 80s. He bought 40 acres of land up here in Valdez because no one wanted it because it's too steep and it can look like a million dollars, but it's all made out of trash. What are the differences sure. between people that are down there and you guys that are up here? <laughs> but I've noticed a lot of the people that live up here have really moved up here to escape 
society. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I'd say everyone up here is like pretty tough to, yeah. you know, go through the just everyday life's a little more difficult when you're up on a mountain, but mm -hmm. I think it's worth it in the long run. It's very peaceful up here. To get to the point where residents live in their own airships, they often start out as students and complete a training program while staying at another iconic location, Eve. Behind me is our latest project. It's called Eve, Earthship Village Ecologies. And it's going to be demonstrating a, a village scenario while here and taking classes, students learn principles of earthship design, construction methods, and philosophy. Our students do a lot of hands-on building out in the field, but in the lab, we actually teach the students how to put together all the components of an earthship right here in the classroom. We met with Alex, who just wrapped up his first session. This is what you do here, right? <laughs> so relocate tires. So you're students, you're, you know, you're, you're people to come learn from the master, is that how it is? Yeah, you know, um, lots of things in my life just kind of showed me that if I wanted to do something outstanding, here I think is the ultimate answer. You know, being able to take care of yourself uh, without the need of a major, you know, national grid has a lot of inherent advantages in terms of efficiency, self-reliance, and just, you know, putting it back in the hands of the people. I think a lot of people in America and the rest of the world would think about going off the grid as being an uncomfortable decision in life. Absolutely, and that's kind of why Earthships are so groovy, because you come here and you see something like the Phoenix, and you're like, this is off-grid. Another Earthship that dons a price tag similar to the Phoenix is the Dobson House. The only thing this place doesn't have is, well, phone service. Other than that, you can live here completely off-grid like a millionaire. You know, there's definitely people who don't know anything about Earthships. There's just the weird hobbit houses in the desert, you know, and then there's the people who think Mike Reynolds is kind of a charlatan, telling people how to come out here and build these wacko structures they can't permit around the globe. And, you know, mm -hmm. they see him as kind of a snake oil salesman. But, you know, any great thinker, I think, will generate criticism. Like, that's just kind of the name of the game. Yeah. I mean, he's challenging the system. Absolutely. You see the system. Core. You see the system anywhere you look from here. Like... Any house that, that is that one right there, you know, oh, I know, it's got a window every, I don't know the codes, but. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. It's very regular. You know what it looks like. It's predictable. And then you look over there and you're like, what in the hell? <laughs> yeah, what, what spacecraft landed yeah. here? <laughs> yeah, I, I used to pay, you know, $1,300 for rent in uh, Lake Forest Park near Seattle mm -hmm. uh, for a one bedroom. And um, now I pay $450 a year on property tax. So it's just freedom. You know, some people are a little afraid of freedom, but we're all on our own path. A unique way Earth shippers build community is through Payday, an event that happens every Friday after a build week. The company brings beer and the Earth Pounders unwind. I mean, is that the ultimate goal for you? Like, come here and, and build a home? I would love to live in an airship, but I'm not as like fuck society as a lot of this place is, <laughs> you know. The airships are kind of forced to stay out here on the outskirts because of regulation and stuff like that. So that definitely fits in line with people that are trying to get away from people and not see everyone a lot and just live by themselves. But I think that community is important too. And even if airship biotexture doesn't acknowledge that it, that's important. It's still that community still exists here. Well, like I said, it kind of attracts this independent spirit. Right. Who doesn't necessarily even want community. Where I'm from, if you want a fixer upper, it's about five hundred thousand dollars in Seattle, and you know that is a monumental cost that you're going to spend most of your life, you know, paying off. And if you're able to get your friends together and build yourself shelter that's very comfortable and awesome, like. You know, it's, it's just a better life, getting out of that stress cycle. I've never held a hammer in my hand. Like, I had no idea about construction or anything, you know. And then, um, yeah, and it just, it just makes sense, you know. It, and now it's family. I mean, Mike is it's more than my boss. He's my friend. But what we haven't touched on yet is possibly the toughest challenge of Mike's life. I mean, is there anything that is challenging for you at this point? I mean, I'm sure there's things that... Like a, about 14 months ago, I was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. And that was a little bit challenging at first. The doctors told me, hey, this is life threatening, dude. You better pick out a casket. It's basically what they said, stage four. And uh, 
They wanted to cut my balls off, cut my prostate out, cut my lymphs out, because it had traveled to my lymphs, and give me radiation and chemo, and then have me buy a bottle of pills every month that costs uh, $17,000 a bottle. And so I don't do any of that. I eat way different. I eat vegetables that I can grow in my airship. Not only is energy off the charts and water and the dogma of utility infrastructure, but the way we eat and feed ourselves with fast food and processed meats full of hormones. Dairy cows are so full of hormones, it's you know, wonder that everybody here doesn't have tits. I mean, it's just, it's insane what they're doing. And it fit right into this. So my solution of Earthships is helping me with cancer. And I, you know, I may be, be full of crap, but I think I'm gonna be alive another 30 years. To go through what you've gone through to get a place like this up and running, all of these places up and running, it's amazing. That takes so much grit, you know, from being completely shut out of essentially this community and then like constructing your own laws to make it work and then to continue on for 50 years. That's something that a lot of people won't be well, able to do. I, I, um, I'm driven now more than ever because I, I, you know, it impressed me to see people waiting in cars for food and showing videos of frozen pipes running water down the stairways and people in cars trying to stay warm in the country that I live in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've seen that in third world countries, stuff like that, but for this country to be reduced to a third world country means that somebody needs to come up with a yellow brick road to a better life. Right. <laughs> and I think that's what this is. And see, that's, that's a shitload of garbage right there, the privacy wall. Yeah. And it's not done yet, but uh, we just, and, and the ones we're doing in the tropics. It's pretty hard to resist being inspired while listening to Mike speak. So to contribute ourselves, we put in some hard labor to provide some Earthship materials. Those materials, beer cans. Just seeing what a home can be changes my perspective on like what I've perceived it to be in my whole life. Honestly, it reminds me of a, when I was like 10 years old, making a tree fort in my backyard. Like no rules, build what you want. Throwing away all conventional architecture. Like I didn't know anything when I was 10 years old. Not that these people are 10 years old, but, but you know what I mean? Like, with what you're saying, it's like when you don't have any restrictions, you've literally just made what worked. The thing that blew my mind the most about the whole thing, we would pretty much be living like normal, like we would plug all of our stuff in, plug our phone in, plug our ba camera batteries in, use the faucet, flush the toilet, use the shower, and it's all happening in your little pod. You're not connected to anything. I know for these people it's their life, but like, what, you, you can't feel that unless you actually like experience it, I don't think. Yeah, what are we doing? Uh, hey man. Good Earthship experience. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe and turn your notifications on so we can explore something new together. Are we going to just leave? We're just going to leave like that? What do we do? Just chuck these canes in the ground? Yeah, okay, let's go. Kind of makes sense. It's like what they build with.